Come on now. But I've never been of the mind just because somebody had a, a travel trailer bill that you need a place to preach that I'm going to call you up and say, well, I know you got a travel trailer payment, so come on over here because so we can pay you to preach. That's not how that I believe that, that it worked in the New Testament. These were men, and the Bible said they, they took all the possessions, they sold them, and they brought it all together, put it in a pot, if you will. I'm just going to make it simplify. And they had all things in common and dwelled together. These were not rich people. These were not people like today's people who are banking off the gospel. When you see people that are becoming celebrities off the gospel, something's wrong. I can tell you this evening, to get a person to commit to a position, you often, often have to tell them, you know, well, uh, we'll do this for you and we'll do that for you. And while I'm on this subject, let me tell you this. Look around you and see if I'm not telling you the truth in most cases. As I have surveyed the church scene for, for, for today, 2019 coming into 2020, what I have begun to understand about churches far and wide, that if you pay somebody to be in a position the church will take on a form that looks like faithfulness. But in reality, many of those churches, if they pull the plug on their finances and stop quit paying people to do to play the piano, paying them to be the youth, paying them to be the youth director, paying them to be the assistant pastor, stop paying them for all, you'll guarantee that you start watching it like going down the bathtub drain or down the toilet. Why? So now, Pastor, are you sure? Yeah, I know how it is. Because people, when there is something in it for them, well, I can get paid. One pastor a couple years ago, he said, pray for our church. He said, we lost our piano player. I said, what happened? He said, well, another church not too far from here offered him another $50 a week to play the piano, and he left another $50. Let me tell you something. $50 don't determine the will of God for me. Hey, come on now and say amen. If $50 determined the will of God for me, I wouldn't be pastoring here for the last probably 10 or 12 years. Let me tell somebody, you've got to get to the place where you're not moved by man's money. You're not moved by man's position. You're not moved by what somebody has to offer you. You're moved by what God's already done for you. You're moved by the salvation plan of God that said I've already given you eternal life if I never gave you another thing. Can you say amen? For us to get people to show up for choir practice, we sometimes have to deal with what's in it for me. I cannot tell you the times that I have had a choir leader tell me well, when I stop using them in the lead singing position or I haven't asked them to sing the main part of the song for a couple of months or a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden they just quit coming. Now, I'm telling the truth. I'm, I'm, this is reality. Well, I'm telling you right here. This is reality. Well, you get somebody. I had one man that told me one month. He said, Pastor, I've been praying about something. I'll be leaving the church. I said, you are. I said, what? what's wrong? What happened? He said, well, he said, you know, I haven't been asked to sing in at least a month. Well, I look back, and we have uh, we used to have a book that showed like service track record of different stuff. I had somebody that recorded different parts of the service, how many people were there, just different stuff. I look back in the book, and it wasn't four weeks. It was two weeks ago. It was the last time that he sang. But in his mind, it had been four weeks since he had sang, so he wasn't going to stay. He was going somewhere else. Oftentimes, the pastor will feel obligated to remind people, it give and it shall be given. If you'll just give, God's going to give it back. Because we have been conditioned as American people that from little children that if you do something, you get something back in return. Let me tell you, God may bless you, but that's not the reason that you do what you do. If I give $5 in that offering pair, I'm not sitting back like, now God, I gave $5. I'm expecting $5 back. God, I gave my $10. I'm expecting you to do something. I'm, that's an attitude that I never want to have. I want to have an attitude like, God, here's my $10, and uh, it might be my last $10, but if I don't get that $10 back, you've already blessed me with being saved to the uttermost, sanctified, baptized with the Holy Ghost. Come on now and say amen to me, somebody. But for us to get somebody to give an offering, we've constantly got to deal with what's in it for me. These are two things that it's almost impossible to get a lot of folk to do something that are not really converted in Jesus Christ. First of all is recognition. 
I'll be the first to tell you that I love to recognize people when they do something for God. It's a nature. If I see somebody that is really doing well, I try my best. And sometimes it slips through the cracks because of my mind, my health, or my busy schedule. But I try really hard. If I see somebody really excelling, they're doing great for the Lord, I try to let them say, hey, so boy, you've just been doing so good. I just want you to know I'm proud of you. You know what I mean? I try to do that. I just, I'm so thankful for, for the talent God gave me. God did this all as a praise the Lord. But you see, every pastor is not looking for somebody who's looking for praise, who's looking for a position. Come on now. Every pastor is not looking for somebody who's looking for praise, who's looking for a position. Come on now. But I've just never been the type of person. We have, as a pastor, I cannot tell you the countless, probably thousands of people that have contacted me by the phone and email and messenger and every other thing, social media, asking can they come to this church and sing, especially singers. A lot of preachers, can we come to your church and preach? And such as this. I've just always been of the mind that I'm not inclined to get somebody to come to preach to me just because they need a place to go to preach. I would have people that would call me up and they say, well, you know, we got a spot open at so-and-so. And if I know that person, the Bible said, know them that labor among you. I've learned as I've gotten older that I take my time. I want to get to know somebody. I want to know whether or not what's up, what substance, what's what they made of, what, how faithful are they, who are they, what are they made of, what, is Christ really in there, what's going on inside that heart. I like to know the best I can before I just get anybody to come and visit our church. Know it. But there's a lot of preachers out there I don't have no idea what they are, who they are. There have been a handful of times, Brother Coon, I would click on their social media profile, go to scrolling through it, and half the pictures of them are half naked and different stuff going on. I'm thinking, dear God, I'm seeing all kinds of things, drinking alcohol, and if I say, they ain't coming and preaching in my church. They're not coming to Grace Street because if they're going to get up and tell people how to live, they're going to live what they preach and preach what they live. I don't believe there are going to be no gold diggers in heaven. I don't believe it. And the reason why I'm going to tell you that the Bible said that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But you got, and I'm not telling you that God don't bless people that are in ministry and such as that. There's some people, a handful of people I've got confidence in that are wealthy people. But the reason why that I'm telling you that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is a rich man to get into heaven is because a rich man oftentimes everything is about the money. There are very few people. Some people wonder why they're always broke because the human tendency is always there to get your eyes off the, off the grace of God and the love of God and put it on the money of the world. And God knows if He made you rich, if He made you super wealthy, there are some folks they wouldn't give a dime to the church. Before you know it, they wouldn't even have anything to do with God. But I'm going to tell you, there's a handful of people that God's blessed and He knows they will return and bless the church. Say amen, somebody. I want to tell somebody tonight, when you start going to church and you're more like, Pastor, what can I do? If you want me to vacuum the carpet or clean the commode or preach a sermon. God, if you want me to sing a song or you want me to pray with a soul in the altar, I am willing to be a participator. I am willing to be a, a one that contributes to the body of Christ. Do you know if you get more people to do that, the church would grow like wildfire.